It's that time in the tournament. That's right, baby. Some <laughs> will make the money. Yes. 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 Others will go uh, home empty-handed. Oh, no. uh, I can't stand the bubble is about to burst. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a big pop. For nearly four days, they've toiled. Yeah, queen. Zeus. Over countless hands, they've survived. Oh, yeah. But now comes the big hurdle that literally separates the haves. I'm not bubbling this year. No way. And have nots. Oh, no. Whether you're a world champion, a seasoned pro, a brother, or a brother, the goals are clear. Make the money and make a run to the final table. My God. Everyone and welcome to the World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Along with Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. And inside the Rio Poker Room here on day four, it's one of the most unique scenes in all of poker as the dealers are standing by with hand-for-hand -hand coverage about to begin. Just four players remaining before we hit the money. Two world champs are still in the hunt while last year's bubble boy Kia Hamadani is confident he won't have a repeat performance. The Mizrakis are hoping they can enter the record books as the first First set of four brothers to cash in the main event. Good luck, everybody. Many young pros, including one-time chip leader James Carroll, are also still in the field and have a lot of chips in their possession. Over at our new table, two former Survivor contestants, Jean Revere Ballant, is hoping he will survive past the bubble. Any minute, this place will erupt. And our new feature table is about as solid as you can get, Norman, with Michael Mizraki, Frank Casella, and recent bracelet winner Gavin Smith all holding court. Poker Players Champion Michael Mizraki still has a very remote chance to become Player of the Year. There is the almost certain Player of the Year, double bracelet winner Frank Casella. Canadian Gavin Smith still basking in the glow of winning his first bracelet this year. Also here is Chris Bjorn, who has two bracelets and 22 final tables on his World Series resume. And there is the man who was among the chip leaders, amateur Max Casal. For the four of y'all to cash, what an unmatchable accomplishment that'll be. I mean, there's just no way that'll ever happen again. Yeah, it's crazy. I've got three brothers. That's a lot of damn brothers. I'll you tell you that. what record will not get broken. I bet you there won't be four dumber brothers than you guys. <laughs> oh, Gavin. Settle down. Interesting side note, Norman. If all four Ms. Rocky brothers are next to be eliminated, we'll be in the money. It is a tension-filled time here at the main event. On the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Camp, Frank Casella folds queen, eight of clubs. Over to the big stacked Max Casal, ace nine off. Casal about to cash in the main event for the second straight year. And he's going to raise it up to 11,000 from under the gun, plus two. Fold it around to Gavin Smith. Gavin with small pocket pair. Gavin in the cutoff normally might leap in with pocket fours, but getting close to the bubble, he says no. He lays it down, so over to the big blind, Michael Mizraki, king four off. It's hand for hand, so I might as well take my time. All right? It's a good point. Huh? It's a good point. Take your time. Well, why don't you take a look? Grinders actually huh? looked already. Let me talk to him for a little. You might like it. What? Take it up. You might like it. Well, we are hand for hand, so every table has to finish before you play your next hand. But I really don't oh, see the point go. of this delay. D does Grinder really want to play King Four off from the big blind with a short stack? Now he double checks and folds. Never folding. Yeah, you never fold, man. Show him. Might as well show it. You're never folding that? You're not folding ace nine. If you push right there, I'll call oh, yeah. you. Yeah. I will. What do you show? Ace nine. What do you think I'm going to do if I push? I'm going to have less than ace nine. Casal in the catbird seat there, owning a big stack with the bubble looming, and he had an ace. Perfect time to play the bully. Norman, there are countless things to love about the main event, but perhaps three moments stand out most each and every year. When it starts, when it ends, and right now, when we go hand for hand to get to the money. Lon, as someone who has cashed once at the World Series, I can speak to how much it means to make the money. These players have tirelessly fought to get to this point, and to go home empty-handed would be heartbreaking. So let me be the first to congratulate the 747 who will make the money and console the four unfortunate souls who won't. Hey, there's always next year. 
In hand-for-hand coverage, every table will play one hand, pause, the dealer will stand until each table has done the same, and then continue until four more have been eliminated. Time to read for some. Nobody reads newspapers anymore, so i got to root for this guy. And for others, they play a little tighter on the bubble. Fold. Oh, an anguish fold. Was the fold that painful? (laughs) Kia Hamadani, last year's bubble boy, has plenty of chips to make the money. He looks cocky this year. Big stack, big man. That's the short stack of Paul McCann, who could be this year's Kia Hamadani. Faith. Oh, yeah, this guy has only played he's, jacks. He's, a lot to book <laughs> he's only played jacks the whole day. He doubled up. If he's only playing jacks, Lon, you know he is doomed. You are correct, sir. He has just two and a half big blinds. Elsewhere, Keto Fam knows how to survive a bubble. He finished 41st in the 08 main event. He was all in pre flop with eights against the ace king of Josh Brickus. <laughs> the poker table's always more fun when Keto Fam is around. I'm telling you, you knock me out, you're not going to make final table. No. Rick is the 30-year-old pro out of Pittsburgh. Fam trying to make his pocket eights hold up. Turn card is a 10. Fam still good. Brickus picks up a Broadway draw. An ace, king, or queen would knock out Keto Fam. All right, the river card. Oh, is the queen Broadway for Brickus lights out for Keto. We're now just three away from the money. This Josh Brickus is sitting pretty right now. But remember, he's getting married right after the main event. Things can change. <laughs> you guys are welcome. Brickus having a good main event so far. One of the top five chip stacks in the room. All right, let's check in on another all-in. Chris Tipper all-in and behind with a set of fives. Danny Chamberlain has a flush going to the river, and that will win it for Chamberlain. Tipper is gone. Two 24-year-old poker pros. One stays, one goes. Tipper eliminated in 750th place. Two more players to go. You see dealers on their feet indicating their table ready for the next stand. Now we find Tony Rivera all in with pocket queens for 51,000. Thomas DeClerc with ace king will try to get us one closer to the money. Here's the flop. Rivera's pocket queen still ahead. DeClerc with a gut shot Broadway draw. Rivera, another 24-year-old poker pro. He won a bracelet in 2008. Turn card is a king. Rivera now behind, but with a flush draw. DeClerc with top pair. Rivera now needs an ace nine or any spade or he's gone. I'm feeling lucky. The river card. Oh, it's a spade, and Rivera got lucky. Rivera's alive and kicking. That's a six one right there. With 114,000 and a secure payday minutes away, well, Rivera will hang around if he doesn't get crazy out there. It is like a feeding frenzy when a player is at risk, especially when we're two from the money. Right now, Angel Guillen, a bracelet winner, is all in with aces. Javier Martinez with Jacks trying to play the role of executioner. Martinez, a 27-year-old pro from Spain. All right, here is the flop. Guillen at risk, and Martinez hits a full house. Guillen about the bubble being the bubble boy. Nothing worse than that. At least bubble boy gets the title of bubble boy. If you're the bubble boy to the bubble boy, you get bubkus. And what, this guy's got time for a breath mint? He's about to be the bubble boy to the bubble boy. All right, the turn card. Guillen looking for help. The four does not bring it. And Guillen now needs a river ace, or he'll bubble being the bubble boy. All right, the river card is a nine, and Guillen is the bubble to the bubble boy as Martinez cracks the aces. Saddest sight in sports, Lon, bubbling the bubble boy. Javier Martinez adds to his monster stack, and we're now one player from making the money. With poker, like a lot of things, not everything can be taught. You read the books, you study the players, but sometimes it's just about instinct. So you play and you practice and practice and one day you don't think it, you feel it. Practice for free at the world's largest poker site, PokerStars.com and find the poker star in you. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, Karina Jet using the hand-for-hand hand down. Time to get a picture with their table mates, Sean Robert Belland and Vince Van Patten. Where do I know Vince Van Patten from? What percentage do you think in here uh, never cash a main event? Probably 70%. Never more cash a main? More, sure. huh? more, more, more. More than 70 I would think 70%. I don't care about the math. I just want to burst the money bubble. And we are just one elimination away from doing that. Some people use the time for sleeping. That looks like one of my ex-brothers-in-law. 
Well, one of the short stacks, Paul McCann there, continues to fold his way to the money. If he's smart, he folded pocket jacks. Hamadani's still healthy. Looking good. Boy, he's gotten smug. I preferred him as an underdog. That is he and Nguyen who moved all in with pocket kings. He is up against the jacks held by Ted Ely. Will Nguyen be the bubble boy? He's good through the turn cart. Nguyen must dodge a jack on the river to double up. All right, and now the river card is an ace, and he and win will stick around. Our search for Bubble Boy continues long. We still have 748, and Win has some breathing room after his king's hold up. Woo! Of course, the subplot to this drama is the quest of the four Mizraki brothers to cash in this main event. There's Eric Mizraki. Mizraki and his short stack up against the big stack of Javier Martinez. How much you got left? How much you got left? <laughs> He's got Godzilla <laughs> chips. You've got Bambi chips, Eric. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Oh, the first card was a deuce. I don't need a look, right? <laughs> Doyle's hand. Oh, Doyle will be upset. Sorry, Doyle. Your brothers would be upset if you played that. Martinez acting like a black hole for poker chips out there. So while the tables in the room, over 80, play out their one hand, each of the rest will have to wait for their turn. There's no way there's still hands going. I well, thought there was no way you'd ever wear a faux hawk. That's a faux hawk? I just thought it was an $8 haircut. <laughs> <laughs> the cards are back in the air as the field works to identify the bubble boy. You know, Lon, in ancient Greece, they would run the bubble boy up a flagpole. He'd have to sit up there for a week reading out the names of those who cashed in the main event at the Acropolis. Amazing knowledge of poker you have. Full it over to Brian Fight, 22-year-old poker pro from Texas with Jack Deuce. He attended Weatherford Junior College in Weatherford, Texas. Uh, I believe they are the rambling wreck. <laughs> and he raises to 15000 from under the gun, plus one. Gavin Smith lays it down. Fold it over to Grinder. Grinder looks down at King Queen of Clubs. That's a pretty good hand on the button, but we are on the bubble. Ms. Rocky will think about it. Grinder on the button. Does he want to commit those chips? By the way, Lon, tell me again that four brothers are about to cash in the main event. Is that incredible or what? I don't believe it. Ms. Rocky folds. So now over to Sam Edwards in the small blind. Edwards, a law student at Berkeley with pocket kings. Good thing Grinder folded. I'm on. And he moves all in. He's got over 84,000 chips. Edwards cashed at last year's main event, but if he gets really unlucky here, he'll be our bubble boy. And if Edwards busts, that means Casella will cash and will clinch at least a tie for player of the year. Casella folds. So now back to the original razor, Brian Fight. But I believe that Jack Deuce will be waving the white flag. <laughs> Let the waving begin. Let show, I'll tell you what I had. Wow. I almost re raised your king, queen of clubs. Yeah, and that's how close Grinder was to being on the brink of bubbling. So Sam Edwards and his kings take down that pot pre-flop. Everybody's safe at this table. Still one player to go to identify our bubble boy. You know, in ancient Greece, the main event got so big, they had to move it from the Acropolis to the Parthenon, I believe, in 27 BC. Yeah, yeah, that was the original Pokerus Boomus. Many pros like to take advantage of the bubble, like Johnny Chan. Money. Scotty Wynn. Money. And Patrick Antonius. Money. <laughs> a lot of strong tables around here. Elsewhere, another young pro, Peter Jetton, looking to survive the bubble. He is seated with two-time bracelet winner Brandon Cantu. I'm so scared I'm going Oh, please. If he's scared, I'm Stu Unger. So Cantu and Peter Jetton doing well there at another table. In worse shape, a guy wearing a Peter Jetton button. I'm all in. That's Never Kevin Boudreaux. Ace His ace king called by Joe Parrish, a 65-year-old from Ohio with Queen 8 of clubs. Did he just kiss that Peter Jetton button? That can't be sanitary. The flop is king, queen, king. Boudreaux with Trip Kings. Boudreaux lost a prop bet to Tom Dwan last year. Had to get a temporary tattoo of a unicorn on his face for that main event. Parrish picks up a club flush draw. Uh-oh. Boudreaux could be Bubble Boy. He's got to dodge a river club or he will be Bubble Boy. Ace from space. Ace from space. The river card. 
A deuce of hearts and Boudreaux will survive. If that Peter Jed and Budden gives you that much good luck, order me a dozen. They're actually quite okay. fashionable. <laughs> so Boudreaux survives. He now has 86,500 chips. You're welcome. <laughs> it feels like VJ Day in here, Lon, except no one surrendered. Well, Norman, the moment may be upon us. At one of the outer tables, a player is at risk. Tim McDonald moved all in after the flop with pocket queens. He was immediately called by a flop full house of Ismail Erkanov. McDonald needs running lightning strikes to stay alive. That's not a bubble boy. That's a bubble man. He needs running queens. The turn card is a seven, and that's going to do it. McDonald drawing dead. He is the 2010 bubble boy. Bubble boy. Erkanov's full house breaks the bubble. Bubble boy. Tim McDonald, a 50-year-old from Kentucky, will receive a buy into next year's main event, but the news of his demise is spreading quickly. Gentlemen, 747 players are now all in the money. Every player left guaranteed at least $19,000. For Adam Schoenfeld, his second main event cash. It's time to celebrate at the main event. The 2010 Money Bubble has broken. Hello, beautiful. Oh, yeah. No one to play with. So play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. You fold it? It's the one time everyone at the poker room is happy. It happens. Next year, next year. Right there, baby, next year. What, next year you're Bubble Boy again? Paul oh, McCann it. made it through. Well it's done. <laughs> yeah! It's time! This moment also means something to the players who've been here before. Oh, man. I feel good, baby. Players celebrating in different ways with their families. Steve Sanders just happy to be here after last year's health scare. And the form is Rocky Brothers also reveling in the moment. Form is Rocky Brothers in the money, a statistical improbability. Congratulations on making the money. Oh, you too. Now it's time, baby. It's time to chip up. Good luck, bro. All right, man. Good luck. Good job. Uh, we made history. I'll speak to you later. All right, bro. Good luck. What a truly remarkable accomplishment, but poker has been in the Mizraki family since they were all little kids. My brothers will gamble on anything. I guess it's because my mother and father were gamblers and kind of followed that path in a way. We call my mom Mama Grinder, and I think uh, she likes me the best out of all the brothers. <laughs> I've been playing poker since I was eight years old. Saved up my lunch money. We used to have house games late at night. Me and Mike taught Eric and Donnie, but they haven't picked up most of the game yet, but they're getting really good. It's in our blood no matter what. We, we just, we felt, we always knew that poker will always be a part of our lives. Well, all four of us being in this deep is just amazing. We all just support each other. We're here to give each other advice and uh, inspiration. That's what keeps us going. It's looking good right now, but there's still a long way to go. We all want to pull for at least one of us to make the final table. I think the four of us are going to do great. We'll see what happens. I don't see how we could have a better year than this, unless one of us wins the main event. And if Grinder were to win the main event, he could tie Frank Casella for player of the year. Gavin, I'm the first player of the year to cash the main event, the year that they won. We want a doggy biscuit. You got any doggy biscuits in your purse, baby? I knew you'd be excited for me. That sounded sincere. 
Sincere. I think Gavin dropped out of Sincere Community College in Manitoba after one semester. He got what he was asking for, engaging Gavin Smith. All right, the game is back underway. Let's go out in the field and check in on Steve Sanders. He is all in right now after the flop. He has pocket aces against the pocket kings of Adelson Cottra. The turn card now is an eight, and Sanders still a huge favorite. One more little one. Cottrum needs a king to send Steve Sanders home. River card is another eight, and Sanders with aces up will double up. So let's see if I understand this correctly. Sanders takes a bad beat to Dennis Phillips last year, which saves his life. And heck, he might win the main event this year. D doesn't Dennis Phillips get a piece of the prize money? All right, let's get over to table two for the Jack Links Beef Jerky Wild Card hand. John Robert has survived the bubble, and it'll be interesting to see how deep he can go. Hey, I am a Jack Links Wild Card hand survivor. Action on Pro Karina Jet, who final table to stud eight tournament at this year's World Series. She folds ace deuce. Action folds over to John Dolan, 24 year old full time player from Florida, with the Jack Links Wild Card hand. Yeah, as you said, he's just 24, but this is his sixth World Series cash. A raise to 12,500 from the hijack seat. Yeah, from the hijack seat, two spots to the left of the button. I'm going to put him on Queen Jack suited. Jean Rivera Balland in the big blind, King Deuce. Balland was an excellent soccer player as a kid, and, and something tells me he would flop a lot. <laughs> well, he makes the call, and we'll see a flop. No need for Jean Rivera to see a flop, Balland. He's protecting his blind with a very marginal holding. The flop is 6 10 Deuce, all spades. Balland hit a pair of deuces. Well, if Dolan is suited in spades, he flopped a flush. Well, that's true. Balan first to act. He comes out with 10,000. Balan does not want a call here. Balan gets a call here. And you know, if Dolan flopped a flush, he certainly might slow play it. All right, turn card is another six. Jean Robert now with deuces and sixes. Jean Robert used to hustle pool in L.A. I can definitely see him doing that. Well, he does bet 25000 Here he's trying to hustle John Dolan. Dolan earlier made a World Series final table in a $1,000 No Limit Hold'em event. He's going to raise it up to 65500 Dolan's either got the flush or he could have a flush draw, and he's trying to take Beland off his so-so hand. How much is it? 40500 Sean Rivera needs over 40000 to call. Actually, Dolan would have bet a flush draw on the flop to try to end it. So I think Dolan's got a flush or maybe a big pocket pair. Sean Robert coming back over the top. A re-raise to 135. Wow. Sean Robert's got his bluffing boots on, and I think he's waiting knee-deep in doo-doo. Sean -doo. Robert can't beat much. Dolan now needs almost 70000 to make the call. Well, if you're Dolan, let's say he's got a flush or a big pocket pair. If I'm him, I wouldn't believe Jean Robert's got a full house. I think Jean Robert might wait until the river to pull the trigger with the big bet. Dolan makes the call. I think he's got a real hand, Norman. Yeah, and this much I'm sure of, Lon. Jean Robert is in with the worst of it right now. The river card is a four of hearts, so Jean Robert ends up with deuces and sixes. Jean Robert says his money management is really bad. If he bluffs at this again, I've got to agree with him. <laughs> of course, I don't think Jean Robert can win the pot unless he bets at it again, but does he really think he can move John Dolan off his hand at this point? Well, Ballon may try. He's reaching. Oh, well, man, those chips are going to be moving in the wrong direction. That's 175000 Call. A quick call. Ballon can't like that. Right here. Dolan shows a seven of spades for the nut flush to win the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Well done, Norman. Jean Robert bluffs it off, and Lon, I've got a feather in my Jack Link's wild card hand cap. John Dolan takes that huge pot. A costly misread by Balond, who gave up a bunch of chips needlessly. Bet, we constantly perfect and test our software to ensure it's the fastest, most advanced around. We can solve the best. So our tournament structure and player interface rock like no other. But there's one test that totally cleans up at the table. One test that truly defines the ultimate poker experience. Nice. nice. Very nice. Time now for 
Poker Straight from the Pros, brought to you by PokerStars.net, late on day six of the 09 main event. An unknown player on a lucky streak joined Dennis Phillips at the feature table. One of the people they brought in was Darvin Moon, who I had heard about but never played against, and he's immediately to my left and has me totally dominated in chips. The first hand, I wake up with pocket queens. The Schneider had made a standard raise. I repopped it to 310. I don't want Darvin to even consider this. What does Darvin do? Raise. Of course, a re-raise from Darvin Moon. Tom runs. Now I'm faced with a dilemma because he had just sat down. I had no tail on him, no read on him. But can I lay down queens pre-flop? No. Dennis Phillips, well called. I actually thought to myself, no ace, no king on the flop. All of my chips are going in. There's the flop. Eight, four, ace. Darvin hit his ace. So I'm in trouble. I check, and he bets what's the equivalent of over half of my chips. I had to get some sort of reaction on it, and he gave it to me. Are you going to show me if I fold this? I'll show you. You will show me. Either way. It was a confident reaction. He felt he had the best hand. All right, I'm going to survive another day. Dennis will retreat and shows his queens. All of the unknowns have an advantage for a while. Ace king. You have no idea how to play them. Of course, Darvin Moon went on to finish second in last year's main event and, like Dennis Phillips, made a name for himself in poker history. Back to action here at the feature table. Action on Jan Boy, King Jack of Diamonds. This fellow's an unknown. Take oh. off the glasses, give him a mustache and a little goatee, and he could be Darvin Moon. And from first position, or under the gun, he limps in for 5000 The grinder, Michael Mizraki folds. There's Mardi Gras, and now there's Mizraki Gras line. Can you believe these brothers? <laughs> Over to the big stack at the table, Max Casal. With a six and an ace. He just missed the final table at a World Series Limit Hold'em event in 2007, finishing 10th. And he will not allow limping, and from the cutoff seat, he raises to 15,000. Action folds around to Gavin Smith. Gavin looks down at pocket trays. Remember, before the bubble, Gavin had a very short stack, but mucked pocket fours. Another small pocket pair here, but we're past the bubble. He might push. All right. Gavin does five. put all his chips in the middle, almost 30,000. Uh, 29.5. Got less than six five. big blinds left. Casal with big stack fever makes the call, and he will try to knock off Gavin Smith. Gavin Smith has always fared well at the main event. This is his fourth cash here in the last seven years. All right, so Gavin in for his tournament life. Here's the flop. It is King Ace 10. Casal with a pair of aces to put a real hitch in Gavin's giddy up. Yeah, that flop might be the last one Gavin sees at this main event. Three, Turn four, card three, now. Three. Is a deuce, and that brings Gavin down to his last chance. Gavin about to call ahead to a local watering hole. I'm on my way. Three. 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 Gavin has to have a three. Casal wants the three to come. <laughs> All right, the river card is an eight, and that will do it. Max Casal knocks off Gavin Smith. Gavin with another main event cash, but he's going in the wrong direction. He was 52nd in 04, 471st in 05, 592nd in 07, and now 730th. And that will pay him over $19,000, but Gavin will remember the 2010 World Series as his bracelet year. Congratulations to Gavin Smith. And Max Casal adds chips to his already abundant stack. All right, let's take a look at the FullTiltPoker.net tournament ticker and update last year's November 9 and see how they fared this year. Everyone but Big Lighter and Shaffle made day two. Kata eliminated on day three. And here on day four, Eric Buckman is the last November 9er standing. There is Eric pulling in another pot. Buckman says he enjoyed seeing himself on last year's main event telecast, but he cannot watch the final table anymore because it's too painful. Both Buckman and his final table mate Phil Ivey won bracelets this year. Ivey actually inspired all the Peter Jetton buttons we've seen at this year's main event with this man's face on them. But what does it all mean? Last year on day two of the main event, I was playing with Ivey, and he has those uh, poker fans that wear a big button of his face. And he said, what kind of bet do we have to make where I can get you wearing one of those buttons? We didn't end up booking the bet, but I went and talked to my friend Tom Juan about it, and he wanted to book the bet immediately. So we made a bet for a last longer, and I outlasted him and got to punish him this year by forcing him to wear the button. I wasn't allowed to order just one giant button. I had to order like 30 of them. So I got a couple different kinds made. One picture is from Australia. It's just sort of like this cheesy glamour shot kind of of me holding a koala. 
And then the other one, I'm just wearing this goofy crown for some reason. You know, just another picture that I thought would be kind of funny to have on them. Some of my friends like them and they've taken them and worn them to support me. There's a couple other people around that have a bunch of chips now and they're wearing the Peter Jetton buttons, so it's worked out well for them so far. Did you know, Lon, that on average, koalas spend 18 to 20 hours a day resting or sleeping? They actually have more in common with poker players than I thought. Well, all four Mizraki brothers made the money. Now their own private last longer bet may suffer its first casualty. Eric's all in with pocket jacks. Javier Martinez called with ace king. They both trail the aces of Derek Gibb, who also is at risk. Hey, did anybody have a jack? I anybody have a jack. No one, no one had a jack? All right. <laughs> Lon, I believe at this main event, any Mizraki survives any all-in. All right, here's the flop. Two players at risk, including Eric Mizraki. The flop is deuce 10, deuce Mizraki now with only a glimmer of hope. Gibb with aces up. Martinez would need running cards to knock them both out. Blackjack, speed. Turn card six is no good to Mizraki. Gibb trying to hang on to this huge pot. (laughs) Any jack. He's right. Match that. The river card is a five, and Gibb will win the whole pot. Eric Mizraki knocked out. Good luck, everybody. Apparently, all Mizrakis are not created equal. Nice hand, man. Nice hand, C4. We still got three brothers left, so we'll see what happens. Eric Cash is for over $19,000. Gibb stacks his half million chips, and we're down to three Mizrakis at the main event. Soon, the entire clan will get the news that Eric is out. The most prestigious prize in poker, the bracelets. Presented by the official WSOP game on Facebook. Play online now. After finishing fifth in the 50K Poker Players Championship, Robert Mizraki went on to make two more final tables at the 2010 World Series. But he was unable to win his second bracelet as he finished eighth in both. The $1,500 horse event was won by 58-year-old Russian Konstantin Puchkov, and the $5,000 PLO event was won by Chance Kornov. It's become the World Series of Mizraki's lawn. If this keeps up, they should just move all World Series final tables to the Mizraki's dining room. Robert in a hand right now with Simon Taylor, who just moved all in pre-flop. With 318,000 chips, Robert has the biggest stack of all the Mizraki's, and he folds that hand. Taylor is going to show. Yeah, he shows pocket aces. <laughs> Robert's nickname is Who's Bad? He uses that screen name because he likes Michael Jackson. When people see it online, they think he's bad at poker. Back to the feature table where little brother Grinder Mizraki has been keeping close tabs on the family chip counts. Or maybe he's just playing Tetris. Grinder and Casella sitting this hand out. Samuel Edwards all in for his last 97,000 with Kings. Jan Boy called with Ace Jack. Yeah, please, Ace. Uh, I got a root for Edwards. We were both born in Washington, D.C. Aces. You want an ace? Yes. He yes. wants he wants Vun Aces. <laughs> Give him Vun Aces, please. Uh, the flop. Oh, and there is it's, an ace. There's Vun Ace. Congratulations. Edwards is gracious as he is pushed towards the exit. Small accounts. Small. small. <laughs> Keep them small. Oh, the yes. deuce is small One enough. One more small, please. One more. Jeez, this guy is leading the dealer around by his nose. (laughs) Edwards is going to need a king or he is gone. Oh, it's a queen and that will do it. Jan Boy with aces up knocks out Sam Edwards. Sorry, my friend. Now he's your friend? You just ordered the dealer to vanquish him. (laughs) Edwards earned back-to-back main event (laughs) caches. Finish law school. Come back and see us next year. Darvin Moon here with a German accent. He's got almost 300,000 chips. No, no, nice flop. (laughs) Nice flop indeed. The smallest chip in play right now is the yellow 1,000. The new dark green chip worth 25,000 has been introduced. To table two, Jean Rivera Ballon could use a few more of those green chips. He recently gave up a bunch of his chips to that guy, John Dolan. Dolan in a hand right now with Matt Brown, who has a pair of nines. Dolan a pair of kings after the flop. The turn card is another nine. Brown with trips. Dolan has two pair. Brown had raised pre-flop from the hijack seat, and Dolan called from the cutoff. Brown bet almost half the pot on the flop, and Dolan called again. Brown looks like he's going to bet his trips. 40000 So back over to Dolan now. Dolan studied business at Florida State, but did not graduate. Dolan's kings up are on the discount rack right now. He makes the call against the three nines. And they'll see a river card. It's another tray. Brown improves to nines full. Brown with the hammer. Checks this time. I 
thought Brown would bet again. Dolan now with kings and nines will bet 55,000. Dolan drops in what looks like a value bet. And now Brown with two stacks of orange and more in his hands. 255,000 is the check raise. Well, Dolan's gone from value bet to value regret. <laughs> it's as if Dolan's whole life just flashed in front of him, but hey, he's only 24. I think Dolan already knows the meaning of that check raise from Brown. Show me if I hold it. Uh-uh. <laughs> he folds anyway. Sucks he didn't check it back, huh? Really does, considering it was a massive thought going through my head. Nice handle. And well played there by Matt Brown. Nicely played, bro. God dang. I mean, did you know you were going to check raise before you bet? <laughs> Talk to me, Dawes. Talk to me, kids. What's the upside of talking to Jean Robert? Brown refuses to give up any info to the wily Jean Robert. Out in the field, one Ms. Rocky down, another at risk. Donnie on the right, standing with recently ousted brother Eric. Donnie's all in with a flopped king high straight. Pro David Benjamin has a spade flush draw. If he catches, he could eliminate Donnie and Rafael Sanz Rodrigo, who's all in with a set of tens. One card to come. Donnie will triple up or be knocked out. The Rockies can dodge bullets, baby. I got my vest on. The Ms. Rockies do seem bulletproof. Benjamin looking for a spade. Sanz Rodrigo looking for the board to pair. Either one can knock out Donnie. The river card is a blank, and the straight holds up for Donnie, tripling up to over 400,000. Ms. Rocky Palooza continues. My goodness. Go. We may need the National Guard brought in here to stop Ms. Rocky Arama. <laughs> Donnie wins the main pot, sends Rodrigo with his set, wins a big side pot from Benjamin. Even with one brother down, the remaining Ms. Rockies are charging forward full speed ahead. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, out in the field, 25-year-old internet sensation and bracelet winner Phil Galfon is in a hand with 22-year-old Canadian pro Jonathan Duhamel on the left. Two huge stacks clashing in the night. Galfon, one of the game's brightest young minds, won a bracelet in 2008 and finished 45th in the main event that year. Duhamel has cashed twice earlier at this World Series. Duhamel checked the eight of diamonds on the turn. Galfon fires out 52,000, three diamonds on board. Duamo looks at his cards and folds in a kind of I don't believe you but I can't call sort of way. Galfon looks smart and he is smart. I just look smart. Galfon with almost 1.3 million elsewhere. The Orient Express, Johnny Chan trying to keep on track for another main event final table. He turned to flush and has Eric Capra dead to rights after the river. Capra river two pair. Johnny went 16 years between main event caches. Now he's been in the money twice in the last three years. Chan first to act after the river. Puts together 20 of those orange chips, 100,000. Capra flopped a pair of nines, rivered two pair. And he will make that call. He pushes the chips right to where they're going to go. <laughs> Johnny Chan shows him the winning flush. Johnny Chan still with plenty of chips, still with a chance for a third main event title. Yeah, he lost about one-third of his stack early here on day four, but has since been unstoppable. Chan now in the rarefied air of the Million Chip Club. My goodness. And we got to start thinking, can he actually do it again? All right, let's get back to the feature table. The blinds up to three and six thousand. Casella and Mizraki have not been able to get too much going so far at this table. Both well under the tournament chip average of three hundred twenty-five thousand, and are two of the shorter stacks at this table. From first position, Chris Bjorn lays it down to Michael Mizraki on the Jacklings Beef Jerky Pocket Cam Ace Four Off. Grinder will lay that down over to Casella. With Pocket Kings. Five years ago, Casella was at a World Series final table with Johnny Chan. He had aces. Chan had queens. Johnny flopped a set. Casella wound up in fourth. Chan wound up with his tenth bracelet. With the Kings, Casella raises to 17,000. And by the way, the grinder was 23rd at that same event. It's a small world. Fold it over to the small blind. Tom Duong. Not Tom Duan. Pocket Queens. 
Duong helped pioneer a sport called tricking, which is a mixture of martial arts, gymnastics, and aerobics. That leaves me out on all counts. <laughs> And Duong with the Queens. Re-raises all in for 91,000 to the big blind. Yon Boy. Right move, wrong time for Duong. Ace Queen. Well, he's got a raise and a re-raise all in in front of him. What should he do? All in. All in? Wrong move, wrong time. <laughs> Casella calls all in, and he's in good shape to almost triple up. Nice. Two big hands and a hitchhiker. Casella and Duong at risk. Boy looking for the double knockout. What a dream season it's been for Casella. This is his sixth cash at this World Series. Not an ace. I don't like to hear that, Michael. <laughs> I, I know. I'm superstitious, though. You know, it's one of those things. Somebody goes, oh, I don't know. Casella in a commanding position to do a lot more damage right here. So two players all in. Jan Boy with the one over card can still knock them both out. Tom Duong with pocket queens. Casella with kings. Boy with the ace queen. All right, here's the flop. It is seven. Queen trade. Duong set. Grabs control. Casella in trouble. Are you kidding me? A one-outer? Every time, Queen. And boy, the longest shot now. Casella still in the lead for the tiny side pot, but his main event is all but over. Duong in commanding position to triple up. One aces. Casella hurting the turn card. Four of I'm spades. Green. I'm green. Boy, with a flush draw, green. Duong green. suddenly sweating the river. I'm green. I have one out. Casella needs the king of hearts. You have a little more than him, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I guess I could win a side pot if he doesn't hit a spade. If boy hits a spade, it's a double knockout. Oh, it can't be! Another spade wow. in boys. Flush nice. knocks out both Duong and Frank Casella. Well, the worst hand won, and the better players are going home. Thanks. Appreciate it. Frank Casella's Dream World Series comes to an end in a devastating way. Jan Boy enjoying the moment. I was going to lose either way, obviously, so it didn't matter to me. That's all right. Got to gamble. Well, I felt the pain of that spade up here, and I'm not even in the hand. Wow. What a hand. That was strong, baby. <sighs> this is good. New money, please. Darwin Moon with an accent. Oh, we my hand up. Boy, with almost half a million. Too hot. Is this gamble time? With Casella's elimination, the grinder can only dream of tying Frank for player of the year, but Mike's got to win the whole darn thing. A rude send-off to poor Casella, who completes a stellar World Series. Congratulations, Frank. It's a fun year. Hello, Mr. Cunningham. Alan? Big pot out there, buddy. I'm all in. Don't be scared. <laughs> I call. Only a donkey would make that call. We play at fulltiltpoker.com. Ever since the money bubble burst, I told him, don't do it. The knockouts have been piling up. Scotty took a guy out. Eric Buckman did the same. Even last year's bubble boy, Kia Hamadani, got in on the act. Nearing the end of day four here at the Rio, we go across the room, and it looks like Patrick Antonius is all in. Oh, no. But Patrick's ahead with pocket jacks and a straight draw against the ace king of Eduardo Parra. That fellow's a threat to my guy? All right, the turn card now. And Para catches an ace, and now Patrick's the one looking for help. And now Patrick supply tan back is up against the wall. He's a jack or a tenor. He's gone. It's a five of hearts, and Para takes out Patrick Antonius. Uh, I lost Ivy. Now I've lost Patrick Antonius. Who do I got left? Adam Schoenfeld? How did it all go so wrong? But Patrick finally scores his first main event cash. Uh-oh. Give, give, give me a moment, Lon. Let's check on some notable chip stacks here. Max Casal, Johnny Chan, both over a million. And near the top of the overall leaderboard, while Michael Mizraki currently bringing up the rear for the three Mizraki brothers who are left. Back to Johnny Chan with a suited ace 10. He'll try once again to knock out retired Australian boxer Jeff Fennick, who's all in with only ace five. Fennick, a stationary target, trying to avoid the big blow. All right, the flop. And Johnny hits Broadway Fennick in a deep, deep hole. Well, your tens of ties, not over yet. Fennick doubled through Johnny at the feature table earlier today. He won't get so lucky here. 
Well, Fennec was thrown in the towel. Here his opponent threw it back. You don't see that in boxing. Turn card. A six. No help to Fennec. A Fennec needs a ten to make wow. Broadway two and chop the pot. The river card is a jack not to be. Johnny Chan knocks out Jeff Fennec in 584th place. Have a good trip back. Chan delivers the final body blow to the former Australian boxer. He's got a long trip home. Johnny Chan keeps a rolling here at the main event. Johnny Chan. Well, from a 10-time bracelet winner doing well to a five-time bracelet winner who is now out of here. Norman, another one of your guys has been eliminated as Michael Skinder's set of sevens takes down Alan Cunningham's pair of aces. I can't believe it. It's Adam Schoenfeld or bust for me. Skinder, who plays pro basketball in Germany, knocks off one of the game's best. Cunningham goes away with no bracelets, no final tables, and only one cash at this World Series. Back now to the featured table as day four winds down. The Traveling Ms. Rocky, Eric is here to cheer on his twin brother Michael along with Mrs. Grinder. Is Eric on roller skates? He's got a lot of ground to cover to sweat all his brothers. Eric has a lot of cheerleading to do to get his brother back in this game. Action on Max Casal with Ace 10. 42 years old, born in the Philippines, came to the U.S. when he was a child. And once again, the big stack reaching for chips. We've seen this often with him with the ace, a raise to 17,000. This was the second largest main event field ever, and they came from everywhere. 7,319 players entered this year's main event. Action folds to Jan Boy on the dealer button with pocket sevens. I like this. Cool. <laughs> that is one cheerful donkey. <laughs> he makes the call to Ms. Rocky. In the big blind with pocket tens. The grinder's mood is not as cheerful. Come on. And he does shove for 108,000. Just 18 big blinds left. Back to Casal now. With ace 10, he lays down. I call. And Boyd makes the call with his More pocket action. pair, and he'll be in trouble. But one Ms. Rocky Ooh. out. Another one all in here, but ahead. Seven. Seven. <laughs> tens versus sevens. All of Ms. Rockies know that Grinder's in a dominating position to double up. He'll try to survive Jan Boy's magic. He asks, he gets. All right, here's the flop now. Grinder at risk. Six tray eight. Grinder still best. All those cards look like a seven to me. Jeez, Grinder sits back down. I think that's a mistake. You don't want to get too comfortable against this guy. I don't want to see the tennis spades, that's for sure. A spade would give Boy a flush draw. And we know what he does with those. Another six on the turn. Grinder's okay with that. Wow. Grinder in great shape. Three cider. Seven. One seven, please. One seven. Boy wants one a seven. seven. He asks, he gets. You, one more Only a seven you. would end Michael Mizraki's main event. The river please. card is a four of hearts, and Grinder doubles up. But that was a sweat for him and all the Mizrakis. He's still short stacked, but still standing. Wow. My best hand all day. It's crazy. Uh -huh. I swear. And Boy finally is silenced. So Jan Boy gives Michael Mizraki a double up to 245,000. With that, the grinder has a little more life. The money bubble has finally burst. We're in the open heat. The remaining players are mood to celebrate it's time while others will simply have to wait until next year oh! along the way we said goodbye to several big names oh, including 2010 player of the year frank casella so strong baby many pros are still in the hunt and everyone remaining continues their quest to become one of the november nine for norman chad i'm lon mccarran thanks for watching the world series of poker